Quality is extremely important because, as you know, India has over 1.25 billion people. Quality can be used to give the basic necessities like food, clothing, shelter. Now, the supply chain going from farm to fork, there is a great opportunity in terms of managing the logistics. Look at the housing sector. Uh, urban area housing is limited. There are slums which needs to be eradicated and have development opportunities in the rural areas. Moving on to, uh, we can look at the uh, building modern infrastructure for railroads, for airports, for maritime ports, and roads in general. Also, we can take a look at the situation in education. Now, by act of uh, parliament, in 2009, it was determined that all the children between the age of 6 to 14 have a right for a free and compulsory education. But the quality of that education is an issue. So there are opportunities for improving quality at the elementary, primary, secondary, and higher education level, and particularly in the undergraduate, graduate, and postgraduate levels. Moving on to the healthcare sector, uh, quality of medical centers, trauma centers, physicians, nurses, and medicine itself, that's a big challenge. Now, additionally, the quality of governance in government entities such as panchayats, which is the local unit, then we move on to districts, to the states, and then to the central level. The quality is the ultimate uh, thing in terms of improving the effectiveness and efficiency in all sectors of the government. I think at the highest level is the lack of focus of leadership in terms of their commitment, involvement, and continuous support. Also, not understanding what quality can do for the nation and what are the benefits out of it. Unfortunately, there is a local optimization and government doesn't focus at the systems level. Additionally, there is a lack of focus on continuously improving current processes. Also, there is a lack of focus about developing sustainable uh, <coughs> growth uh, for the long term. And also, there is not enough understanding about leveraging best practices from other parts of the world. Now, if we put all these things together, it boils down to lack of accountability and transparency. Also, there is a tendency to maintain the status quo. Don't rope the boat and go as is without making any changes. Unfortunately, the current prevailing state of corruption is hurting the country badly. And that's why we require better ethics better governance, more accountability, and more transparency. I'll address the processes first. So we can look at the holistic model proposed by the Baldrige. So Baldrige performance excellence criteria in education, in government, in all sectors of the economy. It's very, very helpful. And secondly, ISO standards. And we can focus on top three. One is ISO 9001 for economic prosperity. ISO 14001 for environmental sustainability, and ISO 26000 for social responsibility. So once we have these assessments done, it opens up the opportunity for continuous improvement using some of the tools, and I'll focus them around Baldrige. So for leadership, we need to see 360 degree feedback so that the quality of leadership improves and that improves the entire organization. We move on to the strategic planning. Here we need to use the SWOT analysis, look at the landscape, also use the balanced scorecard approach to deploy the strategy and use HOSIN planning to communicate the strategy throughout the organizations. Moving on to the category three, customer focus, we can use listening post concept. Fourth category, information management and knowledge management. Here we can use benchmarking and develop a knowledge management portal 
to leverage all the good things happening in the organization. Moving to the workforce focus, employee opinion survey is a great tool. Going to the uh, operations focus, we have brainstorming, affinity diagram, Pareto analysis, fishbone diagram, lean and six sigma at our disposal. And then the last item is on the results side. Now results can only happen when there are good processes in place and leverage all the project management techniques to do the continuous improvement and use tools like Gantt chart, critical path method, and also manage the risk. And risk management, there is a very simple matrix called risk matrix. It is the likelihood of the risk and then the impact of the risk. And we need to manage that in order to get the best for the institution. It's a combination. So basic education, uh, the, as I mentioned, between 6 to 14 years old, that's most of it is government run. In urban areas, it's run privately. So there is a competition there. And uh, of course, in rural areas, it's all government based. And it's not adequate at this moment in terms of the access to education, in terms of the quality of the outcome and then the cost associated with it. So we have opportunities to improve quality in all three fronts, providing better access, improving the outcome, and reducing the cost, and managing it more effectively using quality management practices. And healthcare is also very similar. Uh, there are government hospitals where the volumes are huge. Then there are private institutions where it's a limited number of people, those who have a lot of money can go there. So the issue is, in both sides, the quality needs to be maintained. And particularly for common men uh, and common people, we need to have good quality healthcare. For both sectors, Baldrige performance excellence criteria would be a great help. Now let's take the case of education. What I believe is we need to integrate quality in all aspects of education throughout the spectrum. And here we are looking at two things, quality of education at the systems level and quality in education, which is the curriculum level. Secondly, we can leverage the best practices from the 10 Baldrige winners from the United States. And uh, there is one university, one community college, one undergraduate business school, and seven K through 12 schools. Learnings from these institutions can open the way for India to learn from the best of the best. For healthcare, uh, the similar concept, we leverage the Baldrige in healthcare performance excellence. Now there the idea is we really need to understand and borrow the best practices from other sectors, mainly manufacturing, and bring the quality in all aspects of healthcare. And as we know, healthcare is a huge supply chain with so many players in there. So we need to begin to manage that supply chain with quality. Uh, now there we have great opportunity to leverage 16 Baldrige winners of best practices and try to get the best of the best out of that. ASQ India has started a collaboration in the healthcare sector with Armed Forces Medical College in Pune in western state of Maharashtra. Currently India pharma sector is tremendous, under tremendous stress. So the issues are related to quality, uh, <laughs> good uh, manufacturing practices, GMP, and responding to the compliance issues raised by FDA. And it's a huge market, but unless these quality issues are tackled, India will not make any headways. I want to address the human development index issue as a nation as a whole for India. Now, India, as we know by 2013 data, stands at 136 out of 186 countries for the Human Development Index. The number is pretty low, 0.554, compared to Norway, which is number one for Human Development Index, of 0.955. Now, there are three components. One is the life expectancy at birth which India stands for 2013 data at 65.8 years. Number of years of education, 4.4 4 
median years of education 10.7 years are expected and then the last item is gross national income index where it stands at $3,258. So ultimately I think the equality can be deployed in all aspects of government to enhance skills, scale and speed for nation building.